are we doing? Ready. Are you ready? Uh, good afternoon. It's a uh, good afternoon. We got our, our kids back in school. We're very happy about this. We are most uh, hopeful that if we continue our masking work, if we're careful, which our educators have been, if parents continue their desire to have their kids have a good education, and if more Washingtonians get the vaccine, our children uh, should be able to remain in school. And that's something we should be very committed to and very happy about. But that is dependent on the ability of Washingtonians to pull on the rope more than we are right now to make sure our kids can stay in school. And that means using our masks and more people getting vaccines, a safe, effective, free vaccine. We know masking is one of the things we can do. Uh, it's very important to protect all of us, but particularly those who cannot protect themselves. Those are kids under the age of 12 who cannot get the vaccine. That includes people who are immunocompromised in some sense. A mask helps everyone, but when we wear it, it particularly helps those innocent children who cannot protect themselves with a vaccine under 12 it allows us, hopefully, to continue to have, allow them to be in school, and it protects our loved ones who can't take the vaccine because they're immunocompromised in some sense. Therefore, today I'm announcing that effective Monday, we will expand our current facial covering requirement to include large outdoor events of over 500 people. It's very similar to the measures recently adopted by King and Pierce County. Again, this is an expansion of our existing order for everyone age five and up to wear masks in all indoor public settings as well, regardless of vaccination status. So this adds to that essentially existing requirement. For anyone wondering why we're doing this, I guess it should be pretty obvious, is because we're seeing evidence of transmission, unfortunately, in outdoor settings. At the Watershed Festival at the Gorge, led to more than 200 uh, infections from that one event, and it was outdoors. The outdoors remain the safest place for people to be, we understand that. But when people are packed tightly together, we're getting transmission and ultimate hospitalizations and death. When you combine large crowds with the Delta variant, without any mitigation measures in place, we're going to keep seeing these super spreader events, even in outdoor environments. Science has proven the mask can reduce the risk of those transmissions. Now, today is a great day to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. If you're unvaccinated, meaning in some counties, you're 50 times more likely to be hospitalized from COVID. So I hope people make plans today. Good day to do it. Uh, if we can take a look at where we are in hospitalizations in the state, unfortunately, uh, is our graph up there, Josie? Um, yes, okay. So, unfortunately, our hospitalization rates continue to climb. They are at the highest level ever during this pandemic. Now, just pause for a second and think about what that means. When we started this pandemic, we were, we were hoping, praying for a vaccine that could knock it down and keep it at bay. And yet, even though we have it, we still have hospitalizations going through the roof. And in most places in the state of Washington today, hospitals have already had to curtail some of their normal uh, procedures because they're so jammed with COVID patients. This is not acceptable to us. We've got to take measures to not allow our hospitals to be overrun. Because our hospitals are increasingly overwhelmed with COVID patients, uh, more than 90% of them are unvaccinated. In Northern Idaho, hospitals are now rationing care under a crisis uh, standard of care because they've been overwhelmed with COVID patients. We certainly need our friends in, in Idaho government to do more to preserve their citizens' health because we know that their medical crisis is becoming our problem as patients from Idaho uh, would, would need to cross over to Eastern Washington hospitals. Those hospitals are already under great stress because of our own COVID patients. So I'm asking the people of Idaho to adopt some of the safety measures 
like masking requirements that we have in Washington so we can help both our states reduce this horrible pandemic. That and increased vaccinations will reduce the strain on our hospitals because we are all in this together, and I hope people think about it in these terms across the border. We know that our vaccination efforts are actions of compassion across borders. Now, unfortunately, we see COVID activity hitting us big time uh, in Western Washington as well as Eastern Washington. The morgues and funeral homes in Cowlitz County are at capacity. They've had to get refrigerated trucks to hold the deceased so that they can be treated with dignity. And the other tragedy is we have local leaders sometimes who aren't looking for answers to this problem, but rather for excuses for inaction. That is a deadly situation. And unfortunately, we have a disparity in our vaccination rates in our counties. Uh, we're just taking a look at our graph to show our vaccination rates as percentage of populations of those over 12. You see the highest is 84% uh, uh, percent in San Juan. And King at 83, we go down to Ferry at 43, uh, Soden 41, and Stevens at 35. This is just a recipe for disaster in these communities with these low vaccination rates. And that's why we're seeing the hospitals in Tri-Cities and other places that are being overwhelmed because of these low vaccination rates. And I hope that we can do better. Now, if I can, I'd like to talk about some of our vaccination requirements. And by the way, I'm pleased to see uh, President Biden showing leadership today in this regard. He recognizes this as a national problem, and I'm glad he stepped up to the plate to help us across the United States. But look, I just want to address this issue of the decision to be non-vaccinated. And I've heard some people say that it's, it's just sort of an individual decision. That, that is just so far from the truth. The fact is, when you make a decision to not be vaccinated, it is not just about your health. It is about the health of everyone around you. And we need more people to think a little less about me and start thinking a little more about we. This is not about you. It is about us. It is about whether or not we will allow you to infect our children and our grandchildren because you have not been vaccinated. It is about we will, whether we will allow you to infect your coworkers because you are not vaccinated. It is about whether or not we will allow you to force nurses who have been under this incredible stress for the last year and a half to have to explain more to their families why their family member may not ever come off the ventilator. This is what this is about. It's about a public responsibility. And we are asking more people and we need more people to step up to the plate. And I have to tell you, there's a lot of frustration by those who are vaccinated that they have to bear the burden of this irresponsible behavior. Look, I don't think it's a great thing you have to wear a mask to go to a Husky game. I wish that were not so. But the reason is because so many people have refused to become vaccinated. And I hope we will have a little more publicly spirited attitude so that we can fight this together. We all are in this together. And the only way out of this is vaccinations. So I'm pleased that we're moving forward in this regard because we need to. I want to show you the epi curve where we are in, on uh, positive cases. This shows our positive cases are at the highest they've ever been per 100,000, and they continue to go up. Fortunately, they're not going up as steeply as they are, but unfortunately, they are continuing to go up. So it is time for people to stop listening to conspiracy theories about microchips in this vaccine and start listening to their physicians. And we are asking people to speak to their physicians about this vaccine. If you are giving consideration to not being vaccinated, we're asking you to get the straight information from your physician. 
And we're pleased that physicians and nurses across the state, tens of thousands of them, have joined us in the effort to talk to their patients about the actual science behind these vaccines. We appreciate uh, their effort. This vaccine is a miracle people have been looking for. Let's put it to work for us. Now, many more employers around the state and the nation, both public and private, continue to recognize the perils of unvaccinated folks. They're requiring vaccinations to protect their workers and the communities where they reside. They know it works. They know it saved lives. They know it has been scientifically proven. Over 300 million shots have been given without severe untoward effects. Now, and President Biden, of course, uh, just issued an order regarding uh, employees, uh, employers of over 100, and for public uh, and federal employees to be vaccinated, including those in Head Start and a wide variety. We hope that uh, people note that the federal government has now joined the state of Washington in an effort to reduce this pandemic by increasing vaccinations. We think it's the right decision. Uh, so these are big steps are being taken, but little tiny baby steps are not ad adequate to the task. Look, just before I walked in here, I just got the um, today's numbers. Um, 4,240 Washingtonians were positive yesterday. 252 Washingtonians were newly hospitalized. 252 in one single day. 59 Washingtonians yesterday died because of COVID. Almost all of them were all preventable deaths. We gotta understand how severe this is. More people die of COVID uh, every three days and died on, on September 11th in the terrorist attacks. This is not a time for little tiny baby steps to attack something that's killing our people. And we're gonna continue on this course. Our efforts are moving forward on our requirement for vaccinations for state employees and those in education and healthcare. I'm pleased that that is progressing accordingly. I also wanna thank Jefferson and Clallam counties for requiring proof of vaccination for bar and restaurant patrons. I think this is something more counties can do. Uh, I wanna thank the Seahawks, the Kraken, the Sounders, the Cougars and the Huskies and others who are requiring vaccine verification for their games. These measures protect attendees, players, and staff, and ultimately all of us. It's the kind of measure we might consider on a wider basis as, as, as this pandemic increases. We are considering measures where the state can help move in this direction. I have not made final decisions in this regard. But it is clear that we need to put pedal to the metal against this pandemic. 